Okay, everybody, and I am Justin Pontarelli, and this is going to be a, uh, a Halloween special. What makes it special? Well, today I'm going to talk about <clears throat> uh, how I decided to buy my first pet and what that pet happened to be. You've probably already guessed if you've watched anything I've previously done, assuming I published that video. I don't remember. Anyway, so when I was around, I don't know, 12 years old, I'm not sure exactly the exact age, maybe 13, 14, I'm not, I don't know, maybe even earlier, maybe 11, I was in middle school. Um, pre previous to that, I think it was my grandmother who had given me a subscription to uh, Children's National Geographic. And... I like the adult version, this one was geared towards kids. And then one of the um, uh, magazines, one of the, one of the, I don't forget what they call them, but anyway, in one of the magazines, there was a section, because it was like a Halloween special edition. Okay, that's what it was, an edition. Okay, Halloween special, right. Of Children's National Geographic. And in that edition, there's a section on pet rats. That's right. And I've got two. <laughs> so, that was like years previous to uh, my, my actual choice to buy them in the first place. Or more specifically, to ask my mom to buy one for me. Because I, I figured it was about time that I had my own pet, you know. We had a pet bird, a, a parakeet. And um, later on, of course, we ended up getting a pet dog. But I wanted my own pet. Okay. I figured I, I could handle the responsibility, and it would, I, thought, I thought it'd be fun to have my own pet, you know, real nice to have my own pet. And my only reference to why I wanted a pet rat was the National Geographic magazine that I had, which I have since thrown out, but anyway, I remember it clearly, clearly enough. It showed a little girl, I think it was like a little girl, and maybe a little boy interacting with pet rats. And the article explained that they're that they're clean animals. They bathe themselves, so in that sense, they're kind of like cats. They're very social animals, rather like dogs. They even basically attach themselves to you. Um, so the general idea was that they really do make good pets, according to this article. Um, obviously, I've learned throughout the ages, that the only shortfall is that they only live for about two to three years, or four, depending on their health and their breed and all that stuff. Because obviously they come in different, you know, color breeds, varieties, so to speak. You know, these two are, hey, stop moving around. <laughs> these two are called hooded because they have like a black hood, then usually followed by a stripe on their backs. This one, for example, is Ruth. See the solid stripe? That's Ruth. That's how I know it's Ruth. And this one is Rose. Say hi, Rose. Rose says hi. Rose has a broken stripe, but she isn't. But she's still. Oops. <laughs> there you go. But she's still the same variety rat. She's still a hooded rat. They came from the same mother, the same litter. They're sisters. They're both girls. <laughs> um. There you go. So. And these ones will probably only live for about three years if I'm lucky. Because hoodeds tend to not live too long because I think they're probably typically inter interbred a lot. So that's those are the downfalls with rats. So once you get attached to them, after that they die, it's like, I just got really attached to them and um, now they're gone. So that's really horrible. I don't, that's not nice, but that's life. Um, beyond that, though, they're really cheap to maintain. Um, typically... If you don't want to make your own food, if you're lazy about it like I am, you can simply buy like a small bag of food like this, which typically costs around $9, $10, depending on where you buy it from. And that'll last these two girls for about, I want to say, I don't know, seems like two, three months, I guess. Maybe two months. It depends. But you can also make them fresh fruit and vegetables and stuff, depending on... There's like a, a list of things you can't give them, 
okay, and I'm aware of that mostly. Um, if you're never, if you're not sure, you just look it up on the internet nowadays, okay. But they are rats, and they can basically eat about anything that they can get their mouths on, okay. Um, obviously, they're not gonna, they don't hurt you, okay. There's a huge difference between domesticated and wild rats, and you learn that as you go along, okay. Domesticated rats have been taught to not hurt humans, so I can, like, for example, I can be rough with them like this, you know, and she's not gonna, she's not gonna bite me, see? She's okay with it. She's fine. She's just gonna lick my finger and, you know, go on with her playtime. Right now, they're a little active because they just woke up and they're probably really hungry. They tend to be hungry when they wake up just like I am, and they get a little rambunctious when they know it's time to eat. Because they smell the food, they're, they're kind of active, so that's why you're all, they're all over me, like, like there's no tomorrow. And they might leak on me, too, because um, one of the downfalls with the rats, just like any other animals, they're gonna, there's going to be downfalls. When they're upset, they tend to pee or poop. So if they get really upset or agitated or excited, I might find a puddle on my lovely um, flannel here. So one of the uh, pieces of advice that I would give to any potential rat owners is that you always wear your rat shirt or rat clothing. Basically clothing, in my opinion, that should be specifically dedicated to being used or worn when you tend on staying home and hanging out with your rats and holding them like this. Otherwise, you might find yourselves with holes in your clothes that you want, that you like if you have nice clothes, you might find little holes in your clothes or pee, pee spots. And if you're not careful, and if you hold them too long without giving them a break, you might find little poopies somewhere. But typically with these girls, they have decent bladder control and bowel control. So typically that doesn't, that doesn't really happen typically, okay? And they're, they're really not... They haven't really chewed on my clothing yet, although I've had a lot of um, other rats in the past that decide my clothes make good chew toys. So I'll end up seeing, like, the collars of my shirt will be chewed off. I remember one time I was working as a dishwasher at Cracker Barrel, and my shirt would come home smelling like food, and it would be, like, drenched, and it would be, like, kind of damp, and, and, and you know, it's, it's all soaked from being in the dish room. So I was feeling lazy one time, so I wanted to immediately hold my rats and not change my clothes. So I sat down, and my clothes at this point were pretty dry. So, you know, it takes a little while for them to dry, but they do dry. But they still smell like food. <clears throat> so what happens? I put my rats on my shoulders, and sometimes they crawl into my, into my shirt, underneath my shirt. And apparently they settled in the nook of my... She's crawling on my camera phone. There we go. Okay. So she decided to settle, or they decided to settle, not these two, of course. This was a long time ago. Um, they decided to settle into the nook of my armpit area, like right down there. And I'm sitting on my bed, kind of relaxing and just chilling out, you know. And I'm thinking to myself, spend a few minutes now. They're not moving. What are they doing? So I reach in there, and lo and behold... I'm like, oh no, what did they do? They chewed a gigantic hole in my armpit area, totally destroying my shirt. I wasn't even paying I wasn't even paying attention, just relaxing and the damage they can do so quickly when you're not watching them. So lesson learned. Um if you got if you got clothing and it smells like food, don't be wearing it around your rats. Okay. If it smells like food, they will eat it. They will destroy it. Okay. So another another hot tip. If your hands ever smell like food, wash them thoroughly before holding your rats. Because younger rats will not know the difference between your fingers and food, and I might be inclined to take a hot grab at you. And there's a difference between like a grab and a just kind of like test to nibble. Okay. A grab hurts and can penetrate the skin. A test nibble is when they're kind of like testing something with their teeth to see what it is, and that won't hurt. They'll just feel like a little, you know, 
like a little scratch on your skin, and you'll be like, what's that? It's like, oh, she's just testing my finger out. But that tends to stop once they get to know you. Then they stop testibling you. At this point, you know, I've never been bitten. And, well, correction. I've only been bitten like once, but that was when I was presenting food to my rats with my fingertips. If they miss with their teeth and they misjudge, they might accidentally grab your fingertips. And it takes about a split second for them to realize they've bitten the wrong thing and they will actually recoil and let go of you. They're smart enough to be like, oh, that's not what I'm supposed to be doing, is it? Beyond that, they're not dogs they don't bite. for. They don't bite when they're playing with you. That's not how they play. Okay? And they don't even bite for self-defense. Like I said, their defense mechanism, a mechanism is to pee when they get upset. So if they're upset, they'll, they will tell you they're upset by peeing on you. So if they want something, give it to them. Speaking of which, let's do that right now. Let's give them some food. Okay. We're going to put this right here. If you don't see me on screen, it's because I've left the frame. I'll, right, I'll be right back to show you these guys eating their food. Watch this. This is real quick. This is really cool, though. Um, kind of like cats, they land on their feet. They're very durable animals. Watch this. She's fine. And again, she's good, too. They're both still happy and vibrant and alive, and they're, they're fine, and you can test their feet, make sure they're okay. I do this to them, kind of like bounce them up and down on my hand to make sure all their limbs are working. If you're, if you're not sure if your rat is injured, gently, like, move their feet around a little bit like this. If they squeak, something's wrong. You can also gently stroke their tails. Okay, just gently move your fingertips along your, their tail. If they squeak, their tail's injured. But these girls are very, very fine, and rats are very durable. Thank goodness. Before, before we let these guys get upset, let's actually feed them, okay? Be right back, guys. Here we go. And weight control with rats is very vital, just like it is with any other animal, which is why I try to feed them equally sized pieces. However, these two girls have different metabolism, so sometimes I have to give one a bigger piece of food than the other, but right now they're kind of about equal. So all you do is you put the food in your hand, and there they go. So typically they don't want to eat like when they're out and about because they want to be in their tank. They want to feel safe and secure, but these two are very hungry. I fell asleep early last night and took my medication, so I was knocked out for a while. I haven't eaten since, like, nine hours ago. It's been around nine to ten with these guys, so they're famished. So this is a technical position that rats take if there's about two or more of them in a, in a group. Well, they want to eat but feel secure. They take, a um, like, a, a butt-to-head position so that they realize that she can't take my food, she can't take my food because her head's over here, her head's over here, so they feel secure with their bodies pressed against one another. Okay. And as long as I don't disturb them, they'll be fine. Now, unlike with dogs, though, you can actually still touch your rats while they're eating, and typically you won't have any problems. Okay? And just like with dogs, though, it's best to socialize your rats by petting them and touching them even while they're eating, especially when they're younger, so they get the idea that it's okay for you to touch them. She's okay with it, see? They're, they don't mind. Okay, so they're not vicious creatures. Okay, they're not going to do anything to you. The most annoying thing is when they destroy your, your stuff by chewing on it which is why you need to give them their own chew toys. So if you don't give them their own chew toys, be prepared to have some of your stuff destroyed if you're not paying attention to them properly. Gotta blow my nose. One minute, guys. Wonderful. Okay. 
Morning phlegm. Gotta love it, right? Not at all. Okay. So, um, back to the magazine. So, got this National Geographic magazine for kids. I remember reading this Halloween edition, talking about how awesome pet rats are for kids. Or heck, just in general, anyone can own pet rats. Old, young, doesn't matter. Uh, like I said, they're already, they're, they're cheap to maintain. I can buy like a a huge bag of um, Aspen bedding or any other kind of bedding that you like. And typically it's very inexpensive. And unlike cats and dogs, you don't got to have them taken in to have their, their shots or vaccinations. So unless there's a problem, which can happen, I'm not going to lie. Depending on the variety of rats, they can be very susceptible to tumors, which is always very sad because typically unless you're going to drop money on a pet rat, which I have done it before. I had one rat, she was all black, all black rat. I think it was like a black one. Um, she, had a, she had a tumor growing in her body, took it to the vet. Yes, they can operate on rats. They can be very successful operations. There's lots of veterinarians out there that are actually, that are actually trained on exotic animals and rats are, yes, considered an exotic animal. So here I am at the vet. I drop my, my rat off at the vets. They do an op operation overnight. In the morning, I pick up my rat. She's a bit groggy because they've, you know, given her some medications. But beyond that, she's in great shape and the tumor's gone. You know, and just like with human beings, they kind of stitch you up. And she was stitched up with some hair missing. But beyond that, she did good after that. So it probably did extend her life because the tumors can get so big that they can interfere with the rat's way of living in life. So that's something I'm to watch out for. Of course, they don't mention all these things in the magazine that I had read. All they had mentioned is that how these are awesome, you know, pets for kids. They're smart, they're clean, you know... Like I said, they're just like dogs and, and of how they, and how social they are. They're kind of like cats with how they keep themselves clean all the time. But beyond that, they're what they call a pocket pet. They're very small. Um, these two are, you know, obviously handheld. They will be very content to perch on your shoulder sometimes. Um, one thing you want to watch out for is you you might be allergic to them. So, this could be an allergy. Don't tell anybody. But in my opinion, it's, it's well worth it. If you really love an animal, and you really want to be with an animal, despite a possible allergy, I guess suck it up or uh, take allergy medication. I'll be fine. Anyway, so, I would not live without these guys if you paid me money. These two are my little baby girls. And I've had many over the years, since I was around 12, 13 years old, 14 maybe. And you can only imagine if they live about three years apiece, and I'm 38 years old now, you do the math. Imagine how many sets of rats I could have had. So yeah, so... Um, there are many people online that talk about their pet rats. Some of them have huge cages full of rats. Um, when I started off, though, I'm, I'm going to admit it very honestly, I was just a kid. I didn't know anything. I bought them a giant tank aquarium type of thing. They have a wire top on it. And I've never had any problems. As long as you clean out the shavings often enough, they're going to be fine. But it is recommended to have, like, an open wire tank, okay? Um, and by open wire, I mean, like, a regular cage with bars, you know, metal bars. Um, so there's actual proper ventilation for the animals. Just like human beings, they need airflow. Um, but I never saved up enough or put any money aside for a new tank or cage. And to be honest, 
if you look around my room here, which we will in a second here, I live in a little box. And here's the panoramic view. This is normally where their, my uh, bookcase would be, which I'm having replaced. And it's not a lot of space from here to the door. Like here's my dresser. Here's my drawer. Here's where my, book, my bookcase would be, which would also hold my DVDs. And the tank that I have would sit on top of it, which it will later on as well, so they can be in my room with me. But the problem is, if I want to give up all that space, I could, I guess, put a uh, an actual proper cage there for them. But So if anyone wants to uh, fund that for me, a proper... Um, cage with a stand with, with some space for books and DVDs and stuff. That'd be great. If not, they'll live with what they have. Anyway, here's what they do after they're done eating. They kind of walk around and act like idiots because, you know, it's like, hey, is there more food? No, there's not more food? Okay, then. Now we want to now we want to socialize and, and uh, hang out on your shoulders. But of course, I made a mess on my bed. Which, which is okay. I'm going to just dust that off. It's just some uh, bits of food that they haven't finished. Unlike humans, they don't exactly lick their plates clean, like dogs, I should say. But that's all right. Here you go. So what happened with the, uh, with the magazine and my story? With, what's with the rest of my story? So let's, let's move on with the story. So ultimately, look at this right now. They're starting to try to clean themselves. Well, they started to. No, they stopped. See, right there. Look at that. She was taking a bath. So was she. Now she's scratching herself. Now she's like, nope, I don't want you to see me. Talk to my butt. <laughs> so, ultimately, I'm like a little kid, right? I'm like 12, 13 years old or whatever. I forget the exact age. Now she's, she's, she's licking me. What happens is um, they treat you like they're cage mates. And they will lick each other. They will lick you too. It's like a, it's like a method of grooming you. <laughs> okay. They figure you're just like a giant rat and they will uh, they'll lick you, they'll kiss you. Stuff like that. Cooperate you too. Pull for the camera. <laughs> like I don't want to cooperate. This is like, like this is a video? <laughs> oh, Nuts to that. We don't want to be in a video. I think they're camera shy, personally. So I asked my mother, can I get a pet? Well, sure, what kind of pet? I want a pet rat. Okay. So we go down um, to this local pet shop, which has a long time ago vanished. Just into thin air. <laughs> pet shops do only so so in this area. Uh, luckily enough... In their front main display, there was actually a little display of small animals. And lo and behold, what would you know? A huge tank full of hooded rats. My first rat was named Allison. And this is how I picked her out. I literally reached my hand inside of this giant display, which was an open-topped display. Just a bunch of baby rats. They can't jump out exactly. And I decided, oh... They're they're test nibbling me. At the time I didn't really have a term for it. They're kinda like they're kinda like, like you know, grabbing me gently like this. Just like that, with just little gent gentle grabs. And um it didn't hurt. They're just kinda trying to figure out if I'm food or not. And I'm like, okay, this is weird, but I'm like, I have an idea. My little faster working, you know, teenage, pre teenager brain says, I've got an idea. The first rat who comes up to me and decides not to test me like that, will be the one I pick out. And lo and behold, I don't know really the gender differences at the time. So here comes this one rat up to me, a little girl rat. She was a bit smaller than her brothers. And um, she just kind of sniffs me. Almost disinterested, you know. But she was interested enough to come over. She kind of hung out near my finger for maybe like half a minute. And kind of wandered off. And I'm like, that one. I want that one. Someone came over, scooped her up, put her in a box, 
My mother paid for her. We got some supplies. And here we are today with more. After that, I fell in love with, with rats. I decided rats were the pets for me. And I've had rats ever since then. Um, yeah, I called my first rat Allison. My sister soon after that decided she wanted a pet rat. She got our pet rat, Amber. Heather, though, was highly allergic to rats, so um, so she decided to let me have the rat instead. I took the rat in, so Amber became Allison's cage mate. This was a long time ago before I realized that they need companionship to be to be like totally mentally to, to be mentally stable. Before I kept my first rat alone by itself until Amber came along. Again, guys, I'm sorry. Probably allergies. Also, I get kind of flummy in the morning, too, so I just woke up. Yeah, that's better. <clears throat> We're good now. Okay. Um, the tipping point was when I had a rat um, uh, named Meg. So one day, Meg's just kind of sitting on my shoulder, and we're watching a movie together. Or I'm, really, I'm watching the movie, and Meg's just kind of hanging out on my shoulder. And my mother comes along, comes along, wanting to pet the rat, and Meg turns around and snaps and bites her so hard to draw blood. And I'm thinking, well, I didn't see that coming, because Meg's a saint around me. What was the problem? Rats become kind of psychotic if they're not kept in least in pairs of two. They're social pack animals, kind of like wolves. They need the company of other rats. And despite that fact, you might think, well, they won't get attached to me then. Yes, they will. They still will. Trust me. I'm their buddy. See that? That was a kiss. That was a rat kiss. Okay. <laughs> Um, they will still get attached to you, even though they have each other to be attached to as well, okay? Trust me, they will go insane. No? She'll kiss me, my, she'll kiss me up there instead then. Um, they will go insane if they don't have someone else to hang out with, especially another rat. Okay, so... Rats need all the basic things we do. Food, shelter, water, love... And lots of attention from their own kind. Hey, not on camera. That's embarrassing. <laughs> yes, rats are goofy like that. They will lick you in places that they shouldn't be licking you in because they're rats. And unlike human beings, or I should say unlike, well, let's put it this way. They're not human beings. They cannot catch the common human cold. So you can have the worst cold imaginable with mucus coming out of your nose. And they can lick it up and not get sick. I don't recommend letting them do it, though, because that's just gross, but they're okay, trust me. They're okay. But yeah, so, and likewise, there's diseases that they can get that you cannot get, okay? Um, so, again, there's lots of downsides to owning rats, but they're my babies. Hey, not on camera. They don't normally do that. <laughs> they really don't. Anyway, though, um, you might wonder, though, if I ever breed them. No, because um, I don't need a bunch of babies around. So just two girls, no males. That's it. Um, I guess the final question becomes, um, is there any kind of benefits between either gender? Well... They argue that the uh, benefit behind male rats is that they're less active like this. They're more like lap rats, or like, almost like, you know, they're more calm. You can hold them in your in your hands and just pet them. And, you know, I can do it with these, with these guys, too, so it's not hard. All you do is you just, you know, devote some time to hold them and pet them, and they'll sit still for you. But beyond that, they just want to play. As you can tell right there, she wants to... Go under my shirt. So, it's being annoying. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey. Okay. 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 
but yeah, um, so that's what it was. Walk out to this tank, put my hand in, that one. She was the first one that stopped nibbling, or she was the first one not to nibble on me. After that, here we are today. Um, so yeah. And that was my Halloween story about how I decided to like and keep pet rats for my own. And right now, thankfully, uh, my family helps me take care of them. If I'm not feeling well, if I'm in bed with pre-seizure symptoms, sometimes my uh, brother or stepsister will clean the tank for me. Um, my mother, thankfully, helps me buy or buys the new food for me when I need more food for them or shavings for their tank. I do use aspen bedding. I've been told it's better than a regular pine or cedar, although people recommend other stuff. So if you happen to be a, um, uh, if you also happen to have pet rats and you're thinking to yourself, this guy's an idiot, then I'm sorry, but I probably am. But I've never had any real problems, okay? My rats all live to be about three years old. They've never had any major health problems. So, but if you happen to love rats and want to help me out to buy better supplies, you can donate. Just uh, ask me where to send the cash and I will tell you how to donate to me. No problem. I do have a PayPal account. But if you're okay with an idiot guy like me, being an idiot rat owner, then don't worry about it. They're okay, I promise. They're fine, they're healthy, they're happy. Um, oh. <laughs> Oops, I almost fell. Ah. Sometimes they climb on top of each other and they could fall. It's bad. It really is. But yeah, so I've been told and I've read some in some places that, you know, it's better to make your own food, to feed them fresh food, vegetables, fruit, stuff like that. Not this bagged stuff. Um, they need a, big, a bigger wire tank, not this aquarium that I have them in. And they, um, oh yeah, different bedding, not the, not the aspen pine, or not the aspen bedding that I have. People recommend this uh, hair fresh stuff, I, I forget, but they recommend different stuff. Stuff I don't have. Food that I don't have. Tom, I don't have to devote to them. If I was healthier and had more money and had more space in my room, maybe I would set things up differently, but I don't. Again, this is the space devoted for them. Right now they're in the other room in a temporary location. And I'm hoping my, my dad makes me a new um, bookcase before winter hits. Otherwise, they're going to be in another room where it's a little bit more drafty. So right now I'm stuffing their, their tank with as much um, bedding material as possible so they keep as warm as possible. Kind of like birds, they create little nests and they sleep in the, in the little nesting area. So I give them like uh, paper towels that they can use to shred up and put into their nest, which they do. As you can tell, though, they're, they're quite fine. They're quite okay. I'm trying to give them a little bit more food. So they stay a little bit bigger. So just like regular animals that hibernate in the winter time, I want them to put on a little bit more meat for the winter time so they have more insulation. And I think uh, let's just do a little belly test. Let me feel your belly. See the belly? You can't see the belly. She's just show she's almost show her belly off on, on the camera. She's fine though. But yeah, um, but if you happen to know nothing about rats, then take my word for it, I'm doing okay with them. <laughs> and they're okay with me. But if you know better and want to send me uh, better supplies or send me the, uh, the monetary stuff I need to buy better supplies, then I'll be more than happy to get better supplies. But I do need space to set up my books and movies. And when you're in a small box like this one, look at the look at the line. 
This is a small, small box of a room. This is my space. I've got a bed, a couple other things in here, dresser. I even have a TV in here. Ta-da! Ta-da! It's an old TV. <laughs> I even have a, a DVD player and a, a um, what's that old Nintendo thing? I forgot. I forgot the name of it. Anyway, and this has been your Halloween episode with your freaky host, Justin Pontarelli, hanging out with his freaky girls. Something freaky. No? She's like, nah, I'm good. How about you? I think you want to save the camera? No? Just want to kiss me on my finger? She's like, I'm good. Be my mustache. Oh, that was a kiss. Did you see that? That's a kiss. That was freaky enough, right? With your freaky co-hosts, Ruth, sorry, that's Rose, Ruth and Rose. There we go. Signing off for the day and saying, guys, happy Halloween. Hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more of me and my rats hanging out, let me know in the comments below. If, on the other hand, this freaked you out and you don't want to see this ever again, let me know and I'll stop. <laughs> don't worry about it. I don't want to show off if you don't want to see it. Um, if you want a fur if you don't have a pet of your own, and if you think you're old enough to have a first pet, I do recommend pet rats. They're easy, they're simple, and if you can devote at least um at least an hour or two a day of your own time, the more the merrier, of course. But even an hour will suffice, okay? Especially if they have companionship with other rats. You know, get a nice size um wire tank, wire cage, get two of the same gender, or more of the same gender, because you don't want babies. You really don't. <laughs> okay. They breed fast, and they breed a lot. Imagine one day waking up on Christmas morning, or Christmas Eve, and finding your rat that you bought from the pet shop popping out six boys. It happened to me. Merry Christmas for my rat to me. Here's a present. Six children. What did we do? We eventually had to give them up for adoption to Lollipop Farm. We couldn't take care of them or give them enough attention. That's what happened. We were sold a pregnant rat and we didn't even know it. Yeah. But if you're in the market for a new pet, if you're a, if you're a younger kid wanting your own pet, I recommend these. Not mine, of course. Get your own. <laughs> anyway, look it up online if you want to. Research how to do it. And go out to your local pet shop and adopt one today. Okay? Or better yet, go to your local adoption agency that adopts out animals that have been rescued and adopt one today. Or better yet, two or more of the same gender. Okay? Guys, that's it. Oh, now she wants to show off for the camera and give me more kisses. Again, this has been your freaky host, Justin Pontarelli, with his freaky companions, Ruth and Rose, signing off and saying, guys, happy Halloween. Hope you enjoyed. Leave any questions, comments, or, crit or constructive criticism down below. If you want to see more, let me know. If not, tell me to stop and I will. Guys. So, yeah.